Good afternoon. I'm Frona Klotzman. Uh, I'm in the Towers condo for 26 years. I've enjoyed it very much. And as you can see, uh, it has a lot of walls with all my artwork. And all my pictures uh, do have a story. Ooh. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six grandchildren. I have uh, 14 Kenahara now. And these children were all in the den, and they were all playing and jumping on one another. And I went in with a camera and I said, oh, I have to take this picture, not even knowing that I would want to do a pastel of them. Uh, the oldest one is 24. The next two are a week apart. They share the same day, a week apart. And um, Devorah is now 20 years age, and she's um, a teacher. And this is Golan, who's 17. And this is Rachel, who's graduating Beis Yaakov this year. Have you always lived here? 26 years I've been here. No, I lived, um, well, that's what I talk about. I've lived, I lived at Forest Green when I first came here. And that's how we ended up going to Near Tommy. Um, how long ago? Um, well, I got married in 1958, so uh, I think I joined the shul in 1960. Mm -hmm. And who was rabbi then? Rabbi Leibowitz, and we had a Hebrew school. Leo Reich was our principal. Beautiful Hebrew school. My my boys went to the Hebrew school there. Um, the sisterhood was in function. We just had a cottage. And uh, I came to see what it was all about, and I was very impressed. And I loved the ladies, and I started getting involved in the sisterhood. And uh, I ended up being a president. And uh, I talk about uh, how usually a president's supposed to be one, two years. I had it for 12. <laughs> and uh, I had several girls that became my co-president later on during my reign. And I do mention a lot of the girls. Tell us a little bit about what you remember about the show when you first came there. What, what was it that made an impression on you? What was it that well, what made the that? impression was the rabbi. Rabbi Leibowitz came. And um, he knew, he, he made a fact to make uh, his his sermons were wonderful. He was a beautiful scholar. He came from Canada. And uh, he took right to our congregation. And uh, I went away with him three times to Israel. And we had a wonderful time. Uh, he taught Bible class. He uh, had loads of lectures. His lectures were wonderful. You never fell asleep in shul on Saturday, his sermons. Uh, he knew everybody's name, their first name. When he would see you, he knew your first name. That was one of his traits. That he just, no matter who you were, when you came into shul, he called you by your first name, which was beautiful. He remembered everybody in the congregation. And uh, my son Neil, uh, when he was born, we had the first. He gave, he officiated the first bris. Neil was his first bris at Forest Green. So that was, uh, and then I had the second one also. We had a wonderful caterer, Bluefield caterer, that was in business, and he did. Uh, he came in and did the whole house. And in those days, the women didn't walk down the steps like they do today. And so I sat upstairs in my bedroom with my uh, beautiful nightgown and the bed, the spread turned down, and the women came up to see me, and all the men were downstairs with the food and you know enjoying themselves. Uh, I didn't even see the whole bris. I couldn't, I couldn't come downstairs. Was there a chasm? Uh, yes. Um, well, we later had Arthur Schulman. I don't remember the first one. We, we went through several chasms at that time, different times. Do you remember any of the melodies that they had? Oh, the melodies? Oh, goodness gracious. Well, a lot of them, they're different today. Uh, they really are different. Um, Rabbi Motzen, uh has more of... Um, uh, it's more of a clapping and uh, a different type of song, you know, that he, a melody that he gives. But they were more traditional. They were more traditional songs. Oh, Shalom Aleichem, um, uh, you know, um, different songs we sang. You know, I mean, uh, we say it was, a, it was a singing shul, very friendly shul. Uh, we always used to have a kiddush, and we still do. 
and uh, people from other places would come, you know, after their service to come to our lunch, our, our kiddish after school. Um, Let's picture this. It's a Saturday morning, and you're going to shul. From Forest Green to where the I had the two boys. I used to go. I couldn't boys. go until they were old enough. And you and the two boys are walking to shul, and you come to shul, and what do you see? You well, look, we already had a building when my boys came. See, I, it was only a cottage when I was first married. So in the building, it was already built. The building was already built, and what did it look like? Well, what it looks a lot like? different. It didn't look like it does today. Uh, Rabbi Landau, who came in later, he was responsible for putting the bima in the middle, and uh, was all uh, hand carved. And uh, we used to have uh, windows up on the bima where the Torahs were and they took all that down, and they put a beautiful glass uh, screen. My Uncle Jerry um, was very active there in the shul, and he was responsible for a lot of the decoration. He was an architect, and he did a lot of the design in the shul. Also, he was responsible for building, designing the new chapel that we have. So in the beginning, uh, it was just adequate. It looked good but it was adequate, uh, but now it's gorgeous. And uh, we were able to eliminate the mic, so that was a big thing for us. So tell us about the sisterhood. The sisterhood, when I came in, uh, it was a lovely bunch of women. They were all active and they, we didn't have a building, so every affair we had, uh, we had to raise money to build the shul. Um, I enjoyed it very much. They had a lot of activities, a lot of different things they did. They started a brotherhood, and uh, when my boys were little, I was asked to be president of the PTA with my husband because we had a wonderful principal, um, Leo Reich, and I told you about Rabbi uh, Herschel Leibowitz. He was the best. So the two of them were quite a combination, and we were the best-known shul in that, or the Orthodox shul in the, in the in the community there. Uh, everybody else came after that. Uh, I enjoyed the services. Um, I went every Saturday. The boys had, uh, you know, classes for the young children, which they still do now. And uh, they loved it. They loved it. They, they enjoyed Leo Reich the best. Uh, he made every boy and every girl seem important. And it was a hard time to go to Hebrew school after school. They went from four to six, two days a week, and Sunday. And of course, today, most of the kids go to, you know, all day, day school. Uh, but at that time, it wasn't as popular. So Hebrew school was the way to go for your children. So my boys never complained about Hebrew school. They loved it. What type of activities did the sisterhood do? Um, we had a bowling league. Um, we put on a dinner theater show, which my husband and I were in every year. We sang and danced, and um, we had a Saturday night affair and a Sunday. And the cute thing was um, uh, we had Jerry Haito and Susan Tarragon that wrote this script and put it all together for us. And we had a drummer and a piano player. Uh, it was always a Jewish theme to it. And um, Jerry would say to us, Saturday night, you got a tough crowd. As people come out, they usually go out Saturday night to be entertained. You're going to have to work hard for all those laughs. Well, we were on the stage, and we never got any applause till toward the end. That was so, it was so ironic. She knew exactly the crowd. Sunday night, you had your family. All the family people came, and as soon as you opened your mouth, they laughed and clapped, and it was, it was really exciting. I enjoyed those years. I think we had shows maybe 10 years, and uh, we went out for a part, and we got it. And I remember I was president of the Sisterhood, and Jerry Heitzel used to call me Klotzman, never Frona, Klotzman. And I would be in the front row in the opening scene, and uh, uh, she used to see me, and she'd say, you don't know the words, Klotzman. She said, get out of the front row and get in the back. And I said to her, but I'm sister of present. She says, I don't care about that. You don't know your words. Back row. <laughs> so, Klatsman, do you remember the words? <laughs> uh, well, you know, we did musicals. We did with a Jewish theme. 
you what, know. What musicals? Did you oh, uh, no, they were all uh, amateur sh amateur shows. Mm -hmm. We didn't take a regular show and make it over. It was written. It was funny. Uh, Israeli people, and we had costumes. Bev Kaplan uh, was a genius with a with a sewing machine, and she would measure us, and we'd have costumes. We did Israeli dancing. We did uh, shticks. You know, funny funny scenes. Funny to make you laugh. My husband was in one scene. I think he was Tarzan in one, and he comes out, you know, uh, and he, he had to do a number, and it was all in Jewish. I mean, we just enjoyed ourselves. It was a nice group uh, that we all had a good time. And year after year, we put on this dinner show, and we made a lot of money. Was, we, it, was it dance? No, well, the dance was something else. Uh, when I was president, uh, we had an act of brotherhood, and uh, at the end of the year, we would have a new, uh, not a New Year's, we called it end of the year dance. And we had a live band. And uh, we served platters, deli platters, and we had big crowd. And that was where you went for New Year's at our show. It was uh, very good. And we did it a lot of years. But I mean, a big band, you know, today they use DJs, you know. It's what other kind of activities? Did you we have? had um, a health fair. I was responsible for that. Uh, we had um, uh, nearly new, it was very big. Um, we had, you brought in clothes that you didn't wear anymore. Toys, all kind of uh, kitchen wares, um, different things, books, and you got a number. And if you worked four hours on that day, you got donor credit. We would get $5 donor credit. And our donors, you know, were expensive, but that was the highlight of our year. So uh, it was beautiful. Nowadays, people look for, you know, sales, bargains. Mm -hmm. And in those days, it was uh, something new. And every year, we started out with two days a week. We had it Sunday and Monday. And then we, we ended up just doing one day. And when we had the clothes left over that we couldn't sell, uh, remember, it was all wholesale. And uh, when we couldn't sell it, we, we wrapped everything up and gave it to Adasa. So that was nice the next day. We, they came and, you know, took our clothes. But we, we did a lot of money. We had a bingo uh, every year. We had our sisterhood bingo with another shul, uh, Moses Montefort. We had it every year, bingo, card party, served lunch, had prizes. Uh, what else did we? We had a lot of different things. We had, when I was president, we started a ladies to Hillam group, and we still meet on Tuesday night. For an hour, we read the five books of Moses, and every girl has a part. And at the end, uh, we give a donation, and it goes to Gavarda Shardam, which is a cancer uh, group that takes care of patients that need help, uh, transportation, doctors' appointments, whatever they need. Uh, so every week, we would, you know, collect money when we had the Tehillim group, and. At the end of the month, we would get a nice letter that we, they really appreciated our money that went to a good cause. Uh, we had, um, I have to look at my notes. <laughs> I mean, we have, you know, we had so many things in I, you know, that we did. Um, our sisterhood donor was beautiful. That was the culmination of our year. And I was very fortunate that while I was president, my uncle Jerry and Aunt B uh, of Ashalem uh, were honored. And that was really wonderful. What was their last name? Cher. I was a Cher. Um, uh, it was a big family. And uh, my Uncle Jerry was the baby. And he's now, he's still doing, going strong. He's, I think he's like 94. And he still tries to come to the shul. Um, but he loved the shul, always did love Torah. And he was an architect. And he was responsible for building this uh, new chapel inside the shul, which was amazing. We didn't need. Uh, uh, you know, an annex. He found room in the shul and built a beautiful chapel. He also brought in uh, Noah Goldman with a Montessori school, preschoolers, and uh, that was also a money maker for the shul. Uh, what else can I say about? Um, I mean, I have to. You're going to have to cut. You know, edit it. But uh, we had cookbooks. We had uh, delicious dishes one and delicious dishes two. Uh, very successful cookbooks. Uh, the girl who was in charge, her name was Carolyn Glickman Avisholem, and she was a poet laureate. She uh, wrote poems and they were published, and every sisterhood meeting she would give a poem that she wrote 
about our sisterhood. It was beautiful. Uh, we had um, just a lot of different things that went on in the shul. Uh, Tell me a little bit about some of the other members. Well, I have a list of the girls that aren't here with us anymore. Um, I'd like to, um, you know, really mention their names because uh, Lenore Berman, she was responsible for a lot of this dinner theater show that I mentioned. Evie Berman worked in, this, uh, in the office. Priscilla Dem was a fundraiser. Rona Ginsburg died very young and she was a girlfriend of mine and she couldn't do enough to help on any committee. Carolyn Glickman, I just mentioned, she was a poet laureate. Florence Goldfarb liked to model. We had fashion shows every year at our paid up luncheons. Uh, Sylvia Green was such a big help. She used to belong to a show, um, an older show, and she had heard about near Tom and I brought her in and she was so thrilled. Uh, June Grossblatt, she lived way into the 90s. She loved being part of the sisterhood. Sarah Goldberg was 103. And wow. she was she was on my phone squad. She loved the sisterhood. Lil Farkas was one of my treasures. She was terrific. Betty Hellman was a past president of the sisterhood and was very helpful for all, all our organizations, whatever we had to do. Bertha Klein was very well missed. Um, she uh, was a social secretary. She wrote beautiful notes. And uh, she always was inter, inter, interested in Jewish things that were going on in, in our community. So she would talk about different organizations she had gone to and tell us something about it and tell us when the next affair was. So she kept us community-wise. Mm -hmm. Seal Leck was from the way beginning. She unfortunately died you know, after she was in the shul for a little while. We had two wonderful sisters sisters, Mildred and Florence Margolis. Uh, Florence uh, was in our kitchen. She was kitchen extraordinary, like in the food court. She was in charge of everything in the kitchen, making sure everything was in the meat place and the milk. Lake. And it was her idea to have a kitchen shower. So we, we had a kitchen shower, raised money, and we were able to buy new things for the kitchen. Pearl Resnikoff, she lived a long time with her husband and they always attended all the affairs. Nancy Richmond was one of my neighbors I brought in. She loved to do the uh, dessert refreshments. She was in charge of that. Ruth Siegel was a big help. She always helped at the sisterhood. Blanche Silverstein, she was my uh, recording secretary. She was there a lot of years. And uh, she also liked to model. Dorothy Stein was chairman of the modeling. And uh, like I said, we had a, a fashion show. If you paid up your membership at the beginning of the year, we'd have a fashion show with the, our own models. And we used Lord & Taylor at the time they were in business. So we had gorgeous, gorgeous fashions. And we even had like a hat, hat show. Uh, Elaine Westridge was quite a girl. Uh, she loved the Tehillim group. And uh, she was always there taking reservations for every affair we had and she loved working for us. And my cousin was Bessie Smith. That was the last one I met. No, there were a few more, I'm sorry. Oh, you're gonna have to edit this. Sylvia Shockett, B. Cher I mentioned. Bertha Shapiro. Bertha played piano by ear, and she played every, every sisterhood function. She was terrific. She made all these gorgeous melodies. We walked down the, the runway with her music, and she would play uh, Hat Tikva and the Star Spangled Banner and Carol Cohn sang for us. Um, I had some, and then there was Alice Schlussberg. Alice also lived till she was in her 90s. And Alice and Cookie Pass started a catering sisterhood function. They catered affairs at our fair. Besides what we did for the luncheons, they had a separate catering affair, and we were well known because of that. Now, uh, Go ahead. Oh, I have loads more. <laughs> um, I mentioned that I, I brought in several girls um, when I was president. Uh, Ruth Leibowitz, uh, Marcia Glassband, uh, I don't have it in front of me. Uh, uh, that's, that's okay. I know. There were several girls that helped with me. I worked on the Shul Bulletin. I, I gave it the name The Flame, and I gave it a logo uh, design. Uh, I also did uh, mitzvah cards one year. I designed mitzvah cards that we sent out. 
And uh, Rona Raskin was chairman of this, and she's still doing a beautiful job. I talked about the cookbooks, and um, let's see. Um, our board meetings. Uh, in the beginning of the board meeting, we met uh, the second Tuesday of every month, and um, Ruth Leibowitz ran the board meeting. She would ask, um, she would give a Devora Torah at the beginning of our board meeting, something about the new holidays coming up, anything that she thought the girls would get something out of Jewish Yiddishkeit. Uh, Miriam Benjamin was the past sisterhood president, and she gave us a book review every year at one of our board meetings. So that was very interesting. Uh, let's see. Um, so you, you were a member of Ned Hamid. All the years. All the years. Since, All the years. Since, almost since the beginning. Since. How did you see a change with each rabbi? Well, uh, when Rabbi Leibowitz came in, uh, he was a terrific scholar. He was head of the Rabbi Association. Um, he uh, always gave us uh, intellectual things that were going on. It was always on a higher level. And like I said, he was very friendly. You knew your name. We went away to Israel, several trips with him, which were very enjoyable. Uh, we, uh, we had a wonderful reign with him. We really did. He had a beautiful wife, Nahama, who, didn't, who died very young. And so uh, he met Ruthie Leibowitz, who's now 91, and she became our Rebbitson all those years, and she was wonderful. She, like I said, she was one of my co-presidents. We were on the cover of the Jewish Times, and she was on with me, as well as Irma Pressfelder, who's up in her 80s, also was a hard worker and a past president. I did want to mention uh, two men that I really were responsible for me being uh, a good sisterhood president from the beginning. One was Sam Friedman, Avishalom. You wouldn't have known him, but he was a big guy, strong, and he was always at the shul, all, all day long, anytime. And he used to say to me, Frona, just tell me what you need. I'll have it for you tomorrow. He was terrific. And the other one was, Sam, was um, Max Jacob. And Max Kenahar is in his 90s, and he's still going strong. And Max and Irene live upstairs from me on the fourth floor. So that was very convenient. Whenever I needed to get to see him or talk to him or, Max, can you take this over the shul? He was right here. And he has brought in so many young people. Uh, he's a scholar in his own right, and he was a terrific organizer. And um, he was very helpful for me, being and sister you, of president. You became, became sister of 1986. In 1986, which was shortly after. Was uh, Rabbi Landau hadn't come yet. Rabbi Leibowitz had already died, and uh, we didn't have a rabbi. And I came in in June, and uh, uh, I'll never forget the story I tell everybody is, I didn't have anybody over me. I could do whatever I wanted as president. And I decided to have a fundraiser. We went on a lot of bus trips, and this one we had in August, and we went to the Chagall Museum in Philadelphia, and uh, I ran two bus trips. Very, very great. The problem was I did it on a Friday, and uh, it was in the summer. So I came to the board meeting and at the show, and I said, we made all this money, and they said to me, how could you have an Orthodox sisterhood run a show project on a Friday? And I said, but we went in the summer, and we came home way early. They said, well, suppose a bus would have broken down. Do you know what that would have meant? So they really put me in my place. And I said, I will never, I will never, I'll never have to do this again, you know, as far as a Friday. But I, you know, I never had a rabbi that said, you know, we don't do this on Friday. Rabbi Landau, I had to call him to find out exactly. He came in in September. So I was already president for, you know, a good time before he came in. Did rabbi Landau came in after I was already uh, nominated for president. And uh, we hit it off very well. He once made a remark to me. Uh, he said, Frona, he says, you still look as young as you did from the beginning where I came in with dark hair and now I'm all white. <laughs> so I thought that was a nice compliment. He, uh, he liked the show. Uh, they liked him. We had to get used to his speech because he had a British accent. And he really tried hard. He, um, he uh, always was there when we had an, an important uh, sisterhood meeting. He came in and gave us a kind of heart, you know, to go on, and uh, we're doing a good job. 
Um, he was very well liked in the shul. He was our, our rabbi for 25 years. So I, I worked under Rabbi Leibowitz, Rabbi Landau, and now we have a new young rabbi, Rabbi Israel Motzen, and uh, I do enjoy him. He's very refreshing. He's got a lot of energy, and uh, it's a whole new regime, and a whole new sisterhood regime, and uh, shul, all the officers are all young, and uh, it's, it's, it, we're going forward. It's beautiful. How, how has the sisterhood changed over the years? Well, um, we did a lot. Uh, the sisterhood made a lot of money, and we always gave at the end of the year to the shul. And that was because we had a lot of bus trips. Uh, we, went, uh, we went shopping. We went to the mechanic. Uh, we had good speakers that, you know, we paid, but they were terrific. We had Rudy Miller, and we had um, uh, Dan Roderick. We had uh, Susan Reimer from the, you know, the uh, Baltimore Sun. Uh, we had um, Esther Weiner from the Jewish Museum. She came and talked about... Uh, how to make mandel, and so we decided to make it that night at the shul, and we served it. We did so many wonderful things, uh, and I think our when I was president, we did a lot. We did a lot. I just enjoyed doing and finding different things. We had a health fair. We had a, a, a bazaar craft show. We had uh, interesting speakers. We had a square dance. We had an end-of-the-year dance. We had lectures. We had people from all walks of life uh, always teaching us something different. And it was a wonderful sisterhood. We, we were together. We, uh, we helped one another. And um, it was just a very close, close-knit family, Show life. It was everything for me and my husband. It really was. The first 10 years of my life, I didn't know anything else but the Orthodox Show. It had everything in it. And everything was the Show. And it still is, really. I mean, uh, I'm a widow now, but I still have I still have wonderful friends that I made along the way, and uh, we talk about it all the time, about everything that we did and uh, how great it was. They were good years. They were very good years. I, I don't know if you want me to read what I wrote about my husband, and uh, it was an act of brotherhood at that time, and he died at 66, which was very young. Uh, Marty Klotzman, 1937 to 2003, by Frona Klotzman. When I first met Marty at age 16, I saw in him qualities that I wanted for my best share. Marty always enjoyed life. He showed me how to laugh and not take everything so seriously. He knew the value of a dollar, having worked for his father in business at age 10. Marty went to Tamutical Academy through the 12th grade. He knew a lot about Judaism. Marty could daven well and lead a beautiful service. He also knew how to make and keep friends. His friends were small.